From time to time on my YouTube channel, I do get questions about learning management systems or LMSs. And uh, to be completely frank, my experience is probably not much better than most of you. Uh, as an e-learning designer developer, I've had an opportunity to use uh, three or four different learning management systems over the last, say, 10 years. But my experience is generally as a designer developer is that I go into a learning management system and perhaps I upload a fresh copy of one of my courses or maybe I run a report to see how my course is doing. But the real experts, the LMS administrators and the LMS vendors, uh, quite frankly, should be answering most of your more technical questions. But what I can tell you is that in Adobe Captivate, there is a way that you can preview your course um, within SCORM Cloud, one of the popular LMSs. Uh, and certainly, um, if you are dealing with SCORM compliancy, uh, SCORM Cloud is something you should be familiar with. Uh, in the past, when I would publish a course for testing with SCORM Cloud, I would log into my free account, delete any old SCORM files that might have been there, uploaded the newly published version of my course, maybe test it out several times and see how it worked. But that was a very cumbersome, difficult process. And I usually waited until I was very close to finishing a course before I did that. Uh, for the last couple versions of Adobe Captivate, Adobe has seen fit to include a very simple and easy to use uh, preview in SCORM Cloud function directly from the preview drop-down menu. And we're going to run that today. So I have a very basic course set up here. It's got four multiple choice questions and a quiz results slide. I've done very little to customize it. I have set some of my preferences up, like the name of the course and the course code and things like that. Uh, some of the reporting settings, just the basic SCORM 1.2. Again, probably the most common uh, choice nowadays and a simple 50% pass or fail, and exit if, they, if they're successful, and exit if they're unsuccessful. So real straightforward, nothing too difficult here. So I'm going to preview this in SCORM Cloud. Now normally, you might see a, um, a request to confirm on the terms and conditions of using this. I've already checked that off as OK. Uh, but you can, of course, uh, do that yourself. Then you'll see this screen here where you've got the LMS preview. It's publishing the course, preparing the course, uploading the course. And then you'll see your course launch in a new window that's actually split across the bottom here, uh, in this case down here. And here are the communication logs with SCORM Cloud down here at the bottom. You can expand this if you'd like to see more about it, but quite frankly, this is all Greek to me, so I'm going to keep it down there and just go through my course. Uh, there's two pieces of information that, you know, when it comes to quiz questions that are being um, that are being asked of you, that are, that are being captured. There's a timestamp with each question slide. And there's a latency that's being recorded as well. The timestamp is when the multiple choice question is presented to you. And the latency is the difference between when it's first presented to you and when you answer it, hit submit with an answer. So in this case here, I'm going to choose multiple choice. Uh, who was elected Prime Minister of Canada in 2015? The answer is Justin Trudeau. I'm going to hit submit and then click anywhere to continue. Who was elected president of the United States in 2016? That's Donald Trump. Who was elected prime minister of the UK in 2016? That's Mar Theresa May. Who is, uh, who is the president of the Federal Republic of Germany? That's Frank Walter Steinmeier. Uh, or Steenmeyer. I'm not sure of the pronunciation. I apologize, uh, Frank Walter, if I've offended you. Uh, I'm going to hit submit there. And now we're at our quiz results slide. The, qu the course is obviously going to continue to play to just before the end. I set up the pause point right at the end. Continue should almost immediately exit from this course. 
So that works as expected. Now, if you want to take a look at the results, uh, you can get these results. Now, keep in mind uh, what is communicated between Adobe Captivate and Scorm Cloud could be a very different set of information that's available to you in whatever learning management system you're using for reporting purposes. But it's broken down into three areas. Uh, the course details, and this is things like the course ID, the course title, the individual SCO title and SCO ID, number of attempts, um, did I satisfy the objectives of this course, uh, true. The runtime data is more about did I complete the course or not. Uh, this is showing as completed and the success criteria is passed. And of course, it shows my score information right there. The third section here shows interaction data. Now, on certain learning management systems, this information might be available in an interaction report. Uh, you may have to get something customized for you to get access to this information. But here's what's included there. The ID for each question, which is usually uh, just the name or the actual, not the name rather, but the question stem from your questions with a unique identifier in front. Uh, you'll see multiple choice here or true false or fill in blank or whatever. There's a timestamp and this is the timestamp when you entered into this question. The correct response is indicated A, B, A, A. The weighting, of course, uh, it's all equally weighted. In this case, 10 points each. Uh, the learner response and whether the result was correct or incorrect. Now, this latency, this is how much time the user spent looking at the question before they submitted their response. So it's the difference between when they first saw the question and when they made a selection and hit submit. And that will give you an idea of which questions uh, a user may be spending more time on or not. The final description, I'm not sure what information, uh, where that comes from. Again, I'm not that LMS expert, but this is the kind of information that's available to you. Now, you may, like I said, you may have to go back to your LMS vendor and ask for a custom report be generated if this level of detail is what you're looking for. Uh, but generally, most learning management systems should have the ability to report on interaction data. So hopefully this helps you in a couple of ways. Uh, the first being, of course, uh, to test a course to see if it's possible to pass it, to see if it works with the SCORM 1.2 compliancy. And the other thing, of course, is to see what kind of data is available to you. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.